Hi everyone, it is January 11, 2018. Want to thank my subscriber for sending along this article, which was back in April 2017. The race to build an AI chip for everything just got real. It just got real. So I posted a video earlier today about those um, security floor flaws in uh, Windows 7 and Windows 8 the Intel chips that are creating this security flaw and Microsoft now will be fixing it with patches or chips to to prevent hackers getting into your computer however the chips the chip fix will slow down your computer and create problems in performance? Well, I said in that video that no, I don't believe what Microsoft is telling us. I do believe that they have another agenda. Perhaps it has to do with 5G, the Internet of Things. These chips will actually make it all more efficient. Well, that might be the case. It might also be the case that it's related to artificial intelligence. In 1992, designed uh, this guy, Lacoon, at Bell Labs, the iconic research and development lab outside New York City. He designed a chip to run deep neural networks, complex mathematical systems that can learn tasks on their own by analyzing vast amounts of data. Well, now, uh, these neural networks are rapidly transforming the Internet's biggest players, including Google, Facebook, and Microsoft. Lacoon now oversees the Central Artificial Intelligence Lab inside Facebook, where neural networks identify faces and objects in photos, translates from one language to another, and so much more. Twenty-five years later, Lacoon said, the market very much needs chips, like Anna. Well, Anna was the um, the name of the artificial intelligence chip. So Google recently built its own AI chip called the TPU, and this is widely deployed inside the massive data centers that underpin the company's online empire. They're packed into machines by the thousands. The TPU helps with everything from identifying commands spoken into Android smartphones to choosing results on the Google, Google search engine. Choosing results, artificial intelligence, choosing results for us. Well, what if those results are coming back with information that they want us to have instead of the information that we are seeking. That's the problem with these algorithms. And I do believe that the algorithms used on YouTube, it's one of the reasons why many channels are going down and why there's no recourse to get our channels back. It's all artificial intelligence. But um, this is just the start of a much bigger wave. As CN CNBC revealed last week, several of the original engineers behind the Google TPU are now working to build similar chips at a stealth startup called, is it Croak, Croc? And the big name commercial chip makers, including Intel, IBM, and Qualcomm, they're all pushing in the same direction. They're all pushing towards general artificial intelligence. And I'll get to why I just said general artificial intelligence. But companies like Google, Facebook, and Microsoft can still run their neural networks on standard computer chips known as CPUs. But since CPUs are designed 
as all-purpose processors. This is terribly inefficient. Inefficient. Efficient was the word I used in my earlier video when I saw something that was not quite right with Microsoft coming out and saying, well, there's a security flaw uh, in the processors, and it's been there for 10 years, but I guess they just never did anything. And so now they're going to be coming out with a chip to fix it. I think that this is the artificial intelligence chip. So since CPUs are designed as all-purpose processors, this is terribly inefficient, neural networks can run faster and consume less power when paired with chips specifically designed to handle the massive array of mathematical calculations these artificial systems require. They need artificial chips that can run on personal devices too. There's a lot of headroom there for even more specialized chips that are even more efficient. In other words, the market for artificial intelligence chips is potentially enormous. That's why companies are jumping into the mix. Intel is now building a chip specifically for machine learning. So I don't think that those chips were for plugging up the holes in Microsoft's um, Windows 7 and Windows 8 security. Portal. Hmm. Facebook developing Portal. A gadget which will which will put Facebook microphones and cameras in people's homes. It's really unfortunate that so many people are so wowed by this technology and do not understand that Facebook and Google, YouTube, they are all organizations used by the shadow government to keep uh, tabs on everything that we do on the internet. And because so many people are wowed and they just don't want to learn what these companies really are. They'll buy these gadgets, they'll use them, they'll put cameras and microphones in their homes and Facebook will be able to see everything and hear everything that's going on in people's homes. In George Orwell's 1984, the oppressive rulers of Oceania used devices called telescreens to closely monitor and repress citizens. So this new device, it's expensive, about $500. The device will feature a 15-inch screen, a wide-angle camera with facial recognition and microphones to allow voice control. It's expected to use facial recognition to allow people to log into their accounts without having to type in passwords and will be dedicated to video chat. Yay! And who developed it? Building 8. Building 8. Facebook's Building 8. DARPA. It's DARPA that developed it. And the Research and development that Building 8 is involved in, drone technology, augmented reality, even neuroscience, computers reading your mind. Facebook announced the launch of Building 8 in April 2016, a research lab to develop hardware projects in the style of DARPA and the former DARPA DARPA executive Regina Dugan headed up the division, though it was announced, I believe, in October, just this past October, that Regina is leaving at the beginning of this year, and I'm not sure who's going to be replacing her, but it's DARPA. Why aren't Americans concerned that DARPA and Facebook is, is kind of hooking up here? to develop DARPA-style technology? 
that should really raise everybody's eyebrows, you know, when they should be questioning, hey, Facebook, DARPA, hmm, that's the kind of fusion that I should be concerned with. No? Yes. Absolutely. Um, but getting back to this portal, okay, this portal gadget sounds exactly like what was in 1984. It will closely monitor everybody in their home. The artificial intelligence is very concerning. Everybody should be concerned. Now, this guy came out apparently and in a Reddit Ask Me Anything session, he was asked a lot of questions, but those questions regarding the technology that we have today he was asked about personal computing and what it would look like in 2045. And Gates said that in the next 30 years, it will be a time of rapid progress, which we're already living. And he said, even in the next 10 years, problems like vision and speech understanding and translation will be very good. Computers will be able to recognize your face and your voice. Mechanical robots, their tasks like picking fruit or moving a hospital patient will be solved. Once computers and robots get to a level of capability where seeing and moving is easy, they will be used very extensively. And Microsoft had a project known as the Personal Agent to help people manage their memory, attention, and focus. The idea that you have to find applications and pick them, and they each are trying to tell you what is new, is just not the efficient model. The agent will help solve this. It will work across all your devices. This agent will be the artificial intelligence, picking all of the information that artificial intelligence believes that you need. He also said this technology, oh no, I'm sorry, a Reddit user, it was, a, you know, just writing, I guess, text then to Reddit. Um, but somebody wrote, this technology or developing sounds at its essence like the centralization of knowledge intake. Whomever controls this will control what information people make their own. Even today, we see the daily consequences of people who live in an environment that essentially tunnel vin visions their knowledge. That's what artificial intelligence will do. It tunnels your vision. Facebook News uses artificial intelligence. They use algorithms. You're not actually getting what you seek. You're getting what artificial intelligence wants you to get. And yes, is this an existential threat? Absolutely. Stephen Hawking said artificial intelligence could spell the end of the human race. Um, Elon Musk said artificial intelligence is like summoning the demons. I think we should be very careful about artificial intelligence. If I were to guess, like what our biggest existential threat is, it's probably artificial intelligence. British inventor Clive Sinclair has said he thinks artificial intelligence will doom mankind. Once you start to make machines that are rivaling and surpassing humans with intelligence, it's going to be very difficult for us to survive. It's just an inevitability. And Gates said that he was in the camp that is concerned about superintelligence. Well, I don't know who, you know. The, I believe that they're all for it, but they're voicing the dangers of artificial intelligence just as they let us know in various ways everything that they are doing to the human race. And I believe that that's why 
Elon Musk and Claire, uh, Clive Sinclair and Gates came out with those statements. So the benefits and risks of artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence can encompass anything from Google search algorithms to IBM's Watson to autonomous weapons. Artificial intelligence today, today, is operating. And it's properly known as narrow artificial intelligence, which means that it's operating facial recognition, internet searches, driving cars, but general artificial intelligence is what is very concerning and would outperform humans at nearly every cognitive task. And when you think about these dangers, okay, the artificial intelligence is programmed to do something devastating. Autonomous weapons are artificial intelligence systems that are programmed to kill. In the hands of the wrong person, these weapons could easily cause mass casualties. Moreover, an artificial arms race could inadvertently lead to an artificial war that would also result in mass casualties. To avoid being thwarted by the enemy, these weapons would be designed to be extremely difficult to simply turn off so humans could plausibly lose control of such a situation. The artificial intelligence programmed to do something beneficial, but it develops a destructive method for achieving its goal. This can happen whenever we fail to fully align the artificial intelligence goals with ours, which is strikingly difficult. If you ask an obedient, intelligent car to take you to the airport as fast as possible, it might get you there, chased by helicopters and covered in vomit, doing not what you want, but literally what you asked for. If a super intelligent system is tasked, tasked with a ambitious geoengineering project, it might wreak havoc with our ecosystem as a side effect and view human attempts to stop it as a threat to be met. Because artificial intelligence has the potential to become more intelligent than any human being, we have no surefire way of predicting, predicting how it will behave. People now control the planet not because we're the strongest, fastest, or biggest, but because we're the smartest. Well, so we think. But if we're no longer the smartest, are we assured to remain in control? And with artificial intelligence, no, we are not. So this guy who heads artificial intelligence at Google is worried about Intelligence systems learning human prejudices. Well, they already have biases. Machine learning algorithms used to make millions of decisions every minute. If we give these systems biased data, they will be biased. And who's to say that hasn't been done? Oh, wait, uh, apparently it has black box machine learning models. A system called Compass, made by a company called North Point, offers to predict defendants' likelihood of reoffending and is used already by some judges to determine whether an inmate is granted parole. The workings of Compass are kept secret, but an investigation by ProPublica found evidence that the model may be biased against minorities. Isn't that great? Facebook's new feed algorithm can certainly shape the public perception of social interactions and even major news events. Other algorithms may already be subtly distorting the kinds of medical care a person receives or how they get treated in the criminal system. Uh, very dangerous technology Biased algorithms are everywhere, and no one seems to care.
opaque and potentially biased mathematical models are remaking our lives and neither the company is responsible for developing them nor the government is interested in addressing the problem. If the bias lurking inside the algorithm, algorithms that make ever more important decisions goes unrecognized and unchecked, it could have serious negative consequences, especially for poorer communities and minorities. Algorithms that may conceal hidden biases are already routinely used to make vital financial and legal decisions. Pro Proprietary algorithms are used to decide, for instance, who gets a job interview, who gets granted parole, who gets a loan. And just this year, we've seen more systems that have issues. Issues. Kind of like the human being with their issues. Well, artificial intelligence has issues. And these are just the ones that have been investigated, need to be investigated, Algorithms replace human processes, but they're not held to the same standards. So we're seeing on YouTube, standards, we don't have them anymore. It doesn't matter. They're just taking down channels claiming that people are violating community guidelines when they have not violated any guideline whatsoever. There are no standards with algorithms. So all of this is very, very dangerous. I do believe that these chips, you know, that Microsoft claims to be fixing security holes in Windows 7 and Windows 8 um, is, is for the efficiency to collect data. And, and they're already in Windows 10. That's why they're claiming that Windows 7 and Windows 8 are the concern here, not so much Windows 10. All right, um, just wanted to give you that information. It does seem that we're heading towards general artificial intelligence, and that is when all things human cease. All things human cease. These chips put into your computers, do you really think that you're in control of your computer now? You'd like to think that, but we're not even in control of the information that we get with our searches, certainly not on Google. Anyway, I will link below to all the articles. Hope you get this information out. No, there's no way to stop this, but you know what? People have to wake up. They've got to stop buying all of these gadgets, you know, like, um, what are they called? Google and Amazon have these things that you put in your own home. Echo, Echo is one. Maybe that's Google and Amazon is called something else. Um, and people love it because they can just ask this gadget, this device a question and it will answer the question, or it takes, I guess, notes, you know, um, put on the list tomatoes, but they don't understand <laughs> what these gadgets are doing. They are listening to your every conversation in your home. Portal, portal with wide angle cameras, wide angle cameras, why does it need wide-angle camera if it's just for facial recognition so that you don't have to use passwords on Facebook anymore? Well, I guess they're going to spin this to the consumers as, um, yeah, it's a way to stay connected with family and friends through video chatting and other social features. Oh, won't that be great? Okay, so the wide-angle camera, um, you can just walk around and still chat with your family and friends. You're not understanding that every video is being stored, saved, by Big Brother, by Facebook, by Google, 
by NSA, by DARPA, by government. High-tech surveillance 24-7.